beautiful YouTubians, it's Dasha here with another video just for you. I'm actually kind of curious, let me know where you're watching this from. Pop me a comment down below and tell me where in the world are you? Yeah, but anyway, in today's video I'm going to not be talking about tea. I'm Aww. sorry. <laughs> if you like tea or you think it's the devil, either way, that's not today's topic. No, today we're going to be talking about clipping masks. I'm going to be covering what is a clipping mask and how to identify clipping masks, how do clipping masks work, how to clip or unclip a layer or adjustment layer, and last but not least, how to use clipping layers best for efficient workflow. That last one, that one's all me, okay? That one is my opinion on it. Take it or leave it. You know, <laughs> I'm not telling you how to edit in that last section. I'm more just pointing out that, you know, I find it quite efficient, you know, I find it much quicker than trying to muck about with grouping and layer, you know, faffing with layer masks and no man, like who's got time for that? Okay. <laughs> See ya guys. I hope you enjoy. Let's get straight into it. A clipping layer is any layer or adjustment layer that is attached to either another layer, another adjustment layer, or a group. However, groups themselves can never be clipping layers. It is one important distinction to note. As much as they can have things or, you know, layers or adjustment layers clipped to them, they themselves cannot ever be clipped to anything else. For the sake of demo, let me write a word. T. Oh, okay. <laughs> Eventually. Ha, there we go. Like I said, just for the sake of demo, I'm going to create a copy of this and I'm going to create a new layer, make it black, put it underneath all of this, and then I'm going to clip my picture to my random word. Here we go. Why T? Why not T? <laughs> okay, well, T does not work very well. Y you get the idea. It's clipped. I haven't actually changed anything about the image, but you can see the image through the word T. That's basically a clipping mask. Super, super simple to understand. And if you look very carefully, right here you see the little arrow that points down towards the word T. That little arrow is how you can identify a clipping mask in your layers box. Any clipping mask will have this little arrow. The minute it has that arrow, it becomes a clipping mask or a clipping layer. If it doesn't have that arrow, it's just a normal layer or a normal adjustment layer. Now then, using this random word T, because I don't know why, I'm thinking about tea. Tea's good stuff, man. I love rooibos tea. My husband and I actually went to Ireland two years ago now, before we got married actually, and I hunted down rooibos so that I could have my rooibos tea. I was like, I don't care that we're in another country. I want tea. Delicious, delicious rooibos. I'm not a coffee addict, I'm a tea addict. Specifically, my non-caffeinated rooibos, so healthy. Not really. All right, anyway, let's just use this tea example to explain how clipping masks work. Very simply, your clipping mask will only show anywhere where it overlaps the, the layer beneath it and or overlaps the layer mask beneath it, just to show you what I mean. So on this, this word, let's add a layer mask, B for my brush tool. I'm just gonna make it a, a lot bigger because I can't see it at all. There we go. And with black as my color, let's just rub out this E completely. Okay, so now it's ta. <laughs> I haven't actually changed the word. If I press T for my text tool, go into the text there, it's just a layer mask. Basically shows whatever overlaps both the layer and the layer mask. If you are working with an image and let's say you don't want part of that image on your word, for example. Again, B for my brush tool, I've selected a layer mask down here. Press X to make sure you've got white and black select. Oh, sorry, not, black, not X, D to make sure you've got black and white selected. X to swap them so that black is your foreground color. And let's just color over the A. Notice how the A isn't disappearing. Only the effect of my picture is disappearing from over the letter A, okay? And if I press X again for white, I'm now revealing it over my A. 
that is the core of how clipping masks fundamentally work. You can use these to create a bunch of different effects. So straight up, I have recorded and re-recorded this video four times because I've been trying to figure out how to explain this without getting too confusing and without getting too in-depth to the point where, you know, it gets boring and I'm just like talking like a drone. That's not good for anybody. <laughs> So I hope that this makes sense. At its core, that's all there is to clipping masks. There is nothing fancy about it. I mean, I could even go a step further. So let's group this. Okay, and let me just delete my, my little lay mask there. I just right clicked and pressed delete. All right, so we've got T showing. And let me delete this lay mask. Okay, now let me show you how this works. I'm going to choose Hue Saturation, press Ctrl Alt G to clip my layer. I will cover all the different ways to create clipping masks a little bit ahead in the video, so just stay tuned, keep watching, and I'll get there. <laughs> okay, um, and I'm just gonna gonna muck around with the color. So let's let's make a funky T sign. T sign. We should have T signs in addition to peace signs, but anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna press Ctrl I on my layer mask. B for my brush tool and just color in one of the letters, the E. Okay, then I'm gonna create another clipping mask. Okay, another hue saturation. Control Alt G, clip that, and let's just muck around with the colors again. Oh, I like that color. That actually works quite well. Press Control I and color in where you want your uh, layer mask to actually show it through. I'm going to create yet another hue saturation. Control Alt G to group uh, to clip that. Control I to invert the layer mask. Oh no! Wait. Before we do that, let's see what the effect. So invert again. And do you know what? I actually like it like that. I'm not going to invert this one because I see that it's also affecting the the other hue saturations, and I like what it's doing to the colors. So I'm going to leave it like that. I haven't done anything special, okay? If I unclip this layer, that's what we have, a lovely mess, okay? <laughs> but by clipping it, we've got the word T with funky picture things happening underneath it. It looks pretty cool. I hope that helps. <laughs> um, like I say, I've, I've re-recorded this a couple of times, so I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to be succinct. <laughs> Now that you have a bit of an understanding about the power of clipping masks and why we use them in our workflows, I just want to take a moment to quickly show you all the different ways that you can use to create a clipping mask. I've been using Photoshop for a few years now and it is true <laughs> that when you use Photoshop or Lightroom, you tend to get into a habit of using the tools the way you want to use them. So straight up, if I've forgotten any other mysterious hidden technique way of creating a clipping mask, please let me know because to my knowledge, I think this is these are the only ways. So bear with me guys. So the first and simplest way, let's just use our hue saturation layers. Okay, let's use this top one, is to press Control Alt G or Control Option, I think it's Option, uh, G on a Mac. Okay, that is going to unclip or clip any layer. This becomes really useful when you're creating actions because when you're creating any action, you can't actually click on a layer. Okay, let me rephrase. You can, <laughs> I'm not stopping you, but you shouldn't. <laughs> okay, if you click on a layer, the way Photoshop works is that it associates your click with a very specific named layer. Learning how to use these shortcuts is so useful in your workflow and it speeds you up because if you know exactly what you're trying to do, you can just click, type your little shortcut in and carry on with your day. You don't have to really think about it because your fingers kind of you know mechanical memory or what? Muscle memory, <laughs> not mechanical. Okay, so Control Alt G to clip it, okay? This is the second option. Right click and you'll see, okay, currently I have the, the layer clipped already. So let's click on release clipping mask. Right click again, create clipping mask. Notice it's in exactly the same position, whether it's create or release. Okay, so that's the second way that I know to clip or unclip any layer or adjustment layer. 
The third way that I know of, but basically have never used, but it exists for those of you who like very long uh, processes, go to layer, scroll all the way down to release clipping mask and notice that it will give you the shortcut as well. Super useful, very handy to have in your toolkit. So if I click that, notice it's released. If I go back there, it's going to say create, create clipping mask. Okay. To my knowledge, those are the three ways to clip or unclip any layer or adjustment layer, but not groups. Remember, groups cannot be used as clipping layers. Don't ask me why. I suppose it kind of makes sense when you think about it, but yeah. Cool, guys. I hope that made sense. If I have missed any way to clip or unclip a layer, please do pop me a comment down below. And I would love to learn more because, you, you know, you get stuck in your ways. I use the shortcut method. Occasionally, I'll use the right click method if I'm eating something with one hand and using the mouse. Then, you know, then I'll use that option. But yeah, guys, that is how you do it. thing I want to briefly talk to you about is how to use clipping masks in the best way possible for your workflow to be efficient, to get the most out of it, and to ultimately create some pretty epic things in Photoshop. As you can see here, in little to no time at all, we created a very cool little picture in text with multiple color effect things going on. It looked pretty fancy. I didn't do much. <laughs> okay, and that is the power of clipping masks. Without clipping masks, this would take much longer. Let's just test my theory out. So let's try to create this exact same thing, but without clipping masks, okay? So this random thing that I did took me one, count the layers, one, two, three, four, five, six, plus two groups. So six layers plus two groups. Doing it the other way cost me layer masks, which took too much time to sort out, okay? Whereas these ones were quick scribbles, the two layer masks that I had to deal with. On the other method, without using clipping masks at all, okay, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven clipping masks that I had to look after. Now granted, I chose a word, which is a bit easier to do this trickery with, but let's say it was more complicated, okay? Let's say it was cloning her top and then I needed the color to only match the cloning and then I would have to merge those layers so that whatever I did to the clone didn't affect the rest of the image and oh my word, no. So clip your layers. To cut a very long story short, you can see for yourself the benefits to using clipping layers as much as possible. They're also non-destructive. So if at any point I don't like something, let's just hide that top example. I don't like that that front blue anymore. I could just hide it or delete it and it's gone. I don't feel particularly attached to it because I didn't spend five hours working on that one layer, okay? I didn't waste my life working on my tea. <laughs> the T of my T. I can just delete it, move on, create a new one, muck about with it, it doesn't matter. I mean, just to show you, that layer mask is atrocious. Look at that thing. It doesn't matter. It took me two seconds. I don't care, okay? <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. I really, really hope that helped to demystify clipping masks for you. If you have any questions, comments, 
suggestions, I, you know, things that you would love to see a video about, anything that confused you, let me know. And I will do my best to clarify, to uh, make another video, to answer your questions, whatever the case may be. You beautiful people, I hope you have an amazing day, weekend, afternoon, evening, Merry Christmas. Ooh, Happy Valentine's Day. I'm actually recording this on Valentine's Day. True story. Why? I don't know. But hey, I'm in a good mood. It's the day of love, you know. But yeah, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Love you guys. Bye-bye.